black veteran humiliated by restaurant owner, not knowing who her son is. In the heart of a bustling city, a black female veteran, Kendra Matthews, found herself standing in front of a well-known high-end restaurant. The restaurant was famous for catering to the city's elite, boasting a long history of exclusivity and refinement. Kendra had been in the city to visit her son, Andre, who was in town for an important business deal. After a long day, she decided to treat herself to a nice meal, something she hadn't done in quite some time. Kendra had served in the military for over 20 years. She'd seen the best and worst of humanity in her time, from moments of brotherhood with fellow soldiers to the bitter realities of war. Her body bore the scars of those experiences, and her mind was filled with memories she often tried to push away. Now retired, she was living a quiet life, proud of her son's success, and content with the peace she had finally found after years of service. As she approached the restaurant, she noticed the elegant decor, the well-dressed clientele, and the soft hum of chatter from inside. She smiled to herself, thinking it would be a perfect place to relax and enjoy a quiet dinner. The doorman, however, did not return her smile. His eyes scanned her from head to toe, lingering on her worn but clean attire. A simple, modest dress that was not the designer label most of the restaurant's usual patrons wore. Without a word, he stepped aside, but the look on his face made Kendra feel uneasy. Inside the restaurant, the mood was completely different. It was bustling with activity, filled with people laughing, enjoying fine wine, and feasting on gourmet dishes. Kendra approached the host, a tall white man who barely looked up from his podium as she stood there. When he finally did, his gaze was one of skepticism, as if questioning whether she truly belonged there. "'Can I help you?' he asked, his tone flat, his eyes betraying his thoughts." I'd like a table for one, please, Kendra replied, keeping her voice polite and steady, though she could sense what was coming. The host looked her over again before glancing around the restaurant. I'm afraid we're fully booked tonight, he said, not bothering to check his reservation list. Kendra was taken aback. The restaurant was busy, yes, but there were clearly several empty tables in plain sight. She glanced around and then looked back at the host. "'Are you sure?' she asked. "'I see some open tables.' The host's polite veneer dropped, replaced by a look of annoyance. "'Yes, I'm sure. Those tables are reserved. You'll need to leave.' The words stung, but they weren't unfamiliar to Kendra. She'd faced prejudice before, both subtle and overt, during her military career and after. But this, this felt different. This was personal.' She'd served her country, risked her life for people just like the man standing in front of her, and yet here she was, being denied a simple meal. I understand, Kendra said quietly, but I'd like to speak to the manager. The host's expression soured further, but he waved for a nearby server. Get Paul, he muttered under his breath. A few moments later, Paul, the restaurant's owner, appeared. He was a middle-aged white man with an air of self-importance that seemed to precede him. He walked over, his brow furrowed in irritation. "'Is there a problem?' he asked, his eyes flicking between Kendra and the host. "'Yes,' Kendra said, standing her ground. "'I'd like a table, but your host says you're fully booked.' Paul looked her up and down, his expression hardening as he took in her appearance. "'I'm afraid we don't have anything available for you tonight,' he said dismissively. "'Maybe try somewhere else.' Kendra felt a surge of anger rise within her. It wasn't just the dismissal. It was the casual way he assumed she wasn't worth serving. She thought about her son, Andre, who had always told her to stand tall in the face of injustice, to never let anyone make her feel less than she was. I see, Kendra said, her voice calm but firm. Are you refusing me service because of the way I look or because of the color of my skin? Paul's eyes flashed with irritation, and he crossed his arms over his chest. Look, I run a respectable establishment here. I have the right to refuse service to anyone I please, and I don't need to explain myself to you. The restaurant had grown quieter now. Nearby diners had noticed the exchange and were watching with a mix of curiosity and discomfort. Kendra could feel their eyes on her, but she refused to be cowed. I'm a veteran, Kendra said, her voice steady. 
I've served this country for over 20 years. I've fought for the rights of people like you to run your business as you see fit. All I'm asking for is a meal. Paul scoffed. A veteran, huh? That's nice. But like I said, we're full. Now I'd appreciate it if you'd leave before we have to call security. Kendra stared at him for a long moment, her heart heavy with disappointment, but also a steady resolve. She'd seen men like Paul before, men who thought they were better than others because of their privileges they were born into. But she had something he didn't have, the knowledge that her worth wasn't determined by his judgment. Don't worry, she said softly, you'll be hearing from me again. With that, Kendra turned and walked out of the restaurant, her back straight, her head held high. The diners whispered amongst themselves, and Paul, thinking the matter was settled, returned to his duties without another thought. But the story didn't end there. Kendra's son Andre wasn't just a successful businessman. He was one of the most influential entrepreneurs in the city, a self-made billionaire who had made his fortune in real estate and technology. He had connections, and when he heard about what happened to his mother, he was furious. Andre had always admired his mother's strength, her resilience, and the sacrifices she had made for him and their family. Hearing about how she'd been treated in that restaurant ignited a fire within him, and he knew exactly what to do. Over the next few weeks, Andre quietly began negotiations to purchase the restaurant. With his influence and wealth, it wasn't difficult to make the right moves, and soon enough, the deal was done. The restaurant's owner, Paul, had no idea who the buyer was, only that the offer was too good to refuse. It wasn't until the final papers were signed that Paul learned the truth. Andre showed up at the restaurant on a quiet afternoon, accompanied by his mother. Paul, recognizing Kendra immediately, felt a jolt of surprise. His confusion deepened when Andre stepped forward and introduced himself as the new owner. You? Paul stammered, but Andre cut him off, his voice calm but filled with authority. Yes, me. I'm the one who bought this place. And let me tell you something, Mr. Paul. I bought it because of the way you treated my mother. Paul's face went pale as he realized the gravity of his mistake. I didn't know. It doesn't matter what you knew, Andre said sharply. What matters is that you chose to judge her, just like you probably judged everyone else who doesn't fit your narrow idea of who deserves respect. Kendra stood beside her son, silent but proud. She taught him well. Andre continued, This restaurant is under new management now, and things are going to change. We're going to make this a place where everyone is welcome, no matter what they look like or where they come from. People like you, you're no longer welcome here. With that, Paul's fate was sealed. He had no choice but to leave, his arrogance shattered. Under Andre's leadership, the restaurant became a thriving business, known not just for its excellent food, but for its inclusive atmosphere. Kendra often dined there, greeted with respect and admiration, as she should have been from the start. The community embraced the changes, and the restaurant became a symbol of how one act of prejudice could lead to transformation. In the end, it wasn't just a restaurant that changed, it was the entire neighborhood, and it all began with the mother's quiet dignity and her son's unwavering commitment to justice. This story teaches us the profound importance of respect, humility, and the consequences of prejudice. Kendra Matthews, a black female veteran, was denied service not because of anything she did, but because of the way she was perceived by someone who couldn't see beyond their own biases. Her story is a powerful reminder that judging people based on appearance, race, or status can lead to missed opportunities to connect with individuals who have incredible value, character, and contributions to offer. What stands out most in this story is Kendra's quiet dignity and strength in the face of humiliation. Instead of reacting with anger or retaliation, she let her integrity and resilience speak for her. Her son, Andre, took a stand for his mother, not by lashing out, but by using his resources and influence to create meaningful change. This wasn't just about righting a wrong. It was about transforming a place from one of exclusion to one of inclusion. The lesson here is clear. We should never underestimate the power of respect or the damage that prejudice can cause. We all have the responsibility to treat others with dignity, regardless of who they are or where they come from. 
The question now is how do you respond to acts of prejudice in your own life? What steps can we take individually and collectively to create a more inclusive and respective world? Share your thoughts below.